Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. Today is October the 15th and we're looking at the last chapter of Paul's letter to Timothy, the first letter of Paul to Timothy. So 1 Timothy chapter 6 and uh, I, could, I could talk about the whole passage but I'm going to confine myself to just a password, something that's just hit me something that the Lord has opened my eyes to and something that I want to pass on to you that's the purpose of a password it's something to be passed on it's a word from the Lord it says in verse 6 well let me read the rest of the passage first let me give you the context first and then we'll look at the password itself he begins in verse 1 talking about servants he says that the servants that are under the yoke are to, ca are to count their masters worthy of all honour so that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed you see Christian slaves if they served their master well were a credit to Christ okay if they were poor slaves <laughs> never doing what they were told only, only working when the master was about lazy then the name of God and his doctrine would be blasphemed and they'd say you call yourself a Christian is this what being a Christian is being lazy not doing your work um, <clears throat> and so what we're seeing here is the link between Christian teaching and Christian living they're not separate they're together they're part of one another what we think is the basis of what we do if we have correct Christian teaching then we need to then have correct Christian living then in verse 3 he says if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness Let's stop a moment you see the teaching had to be lived out it's not enough to say oh I know what the Lord wants me to do yeah yeah but you have to then do it and he says if people don't if people don't teach if a man does not teach wholesome words the words of the Lord Jesus which is according to godliness you see the test of teaching is this does the teaching lead to godliness okay <clears throat> people say to me how do I know what's the truth how do I know what the truth well if the truth that's being taught leads to holiness of life to godliness to honesty to integrity then it's wholesome words they're wholesome words but if a man teaches different to that and it does not lead to godliness then he is proud who's proud the person that's teaching the person that's teaching is proud Paul says he knows nothing he is doting about questions there's always some question what about this question what about that question I'm not interested in the question I'm interested in the person one man came to me one day a long time ago and he said Stephen I need to know the answer to this question <coughs> and it was a Calvinistic question do you believe in this do you believe in the other do you believe I said let me ask you something let's suppose I answered that question would the answer of that question lead to you living a holy life and he was silent I said look there's various things in your life that you know that need to be put right before God yes he said there are I said you need to take your focus off questions doting about questions and strife about words whereof cometh envy and strife and railings 
and evil surmisings. Now let me, let's be very honest brethren, I'm in a lot of Facebook sites <coughs> and I go back to the sites <coughs> periodically to have a look what's being said and there might be a, a conversation running constantly about Calvinism and Arminianism, this is an example and I go back a week later and they're still talking about it and they're going round and round and round in circles this particular issue is solved instantly in fact I made a comment and solved the issue once and for all did it make any difference? there is pride they know nothing they're just doting about questions and strife which comes envy and strife and railings accusations and bad talking to one another and name calling and evil surmisings now that evil surmisings means um, unjust and underhand accusations against people in a sly way that are absolutely based on no facts whatsoever he says perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness whoa whoa we have evil teaching I'm gonna call it evil teaching today that says that if you're godly you'll be wealthy that if you're if you're right with God you'll become a millionaire that if you click on this button and say amen suddenly you'll become a millionaire listen gain is not godliness the antidote to all of that false teaching is a little phrase he says this he says godliness with contentment is great gain got that now? now that's my password godliness with contentment is great gain that is the truth of God's word if you want to be if you want to have gain it won't be in money it will be a contentment with what you've got okay based upon godliness before God that is the sort of gain that you need to be going after now the question we've got to ask is what is it that Paul says that we're to do about those that teach otherwise they want to teach oh yes I want to teach you I want to show you things but don't look too closely at my life and he says from such withdraw yourself just say sorry I can't listen to this I need to move on need to move on need to move on to teaching that sound I need to move on to teaching that affects my life in a godly way need to move on to that and then we come right the way down to verse 20 this is the end of the letter he says oh Timothy and you can feel the pathos in his words you can feel the love he has towards him you can feel not frustration but a longing for Timothy he says oh Timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust you've been given a you've been given a treasure you have a treasure in earthen vessels it's the word of God it's the message of God he says avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science <coughs> falsely so called which some having professed have erred concerning the faith grace be with thee amen and so that's my password for today if you want to know what godliness is if you want to know what it is to have great gain before God then you need to be godly and you need to be content because godliness and contentment is great gain God bless you I trust that this will be your experience that you will begin to understand that to have real gain in this life is to be godly and to be content. God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.